uh, impromptu sort of uh, all over the place video again. Um, that's gonna be my specialty now, <laughs> I guess. Um, I I know you want to see the chickens, but you know they're just I don't have the right ones out. <laughs> um, I wanted to address several different things, but the first one I want to address is having predator issues with your chickens. And um, I came across a channel, and it's a channel I watch occasionally, and it's, it's a good channel, okay? And uh, this person's having a problem with uh, lost most of the chicken flock to what turned out to be a bobcat, okay? And so the this person does not have a pen, they have a coop, and they live in the middle of a wilderness, kind of, and uh, near water. So, you know, you can have predators there. And uh, just like we do, we've got all manner of predators here. We don't have fishers there up north, but we've got everything else, including mountain lions and bobcats and, you know, anything you can think of canine-wise. We've got plus domestic roaming dogs, my very favorite. Sarcasm there. Uh, but, you know, the way this person and a lot of other people choose to deal with a predator issue is they put out a trap. And you know, this goes for raccoons or possums or whatever it's causing, it's killing their birds. Um, but the ones that decimate entire flocks are usually coyotes, foxes, bobcats, that kind of thing. Bears can tear up a chicken coop, but they rarely pay much attention to chickens. They're more interested in the feed than the chickens, probably. Um, we've got bears, too. So, the way this person and a lot of other people chose to deal with their predator issue is to put out a trap for the one predator that decimated the flock. Living in, living in um, a predator-rich environment, such as they do, and people like I do, like a lot of other people do, um, rather than build a pen with a hot wire, possibly even a top over it. Now we have built we built a pen with a top. It's not that that hard. We've got the PVC, this, the long pieces, they're very flexible, and we, we arch them over this pen, set the ends down onto the steel post, and then we laid the welder wire over it and secured all the openings, and it was a, you know, nothing aerial could get in there, and nothing otherwise could easily get in there, and we lined the sides with um, harbor cloth or some other kind of wire, smaller wire, so that it wasn't just the big two by four openings. So uh, it can be done. It's not that difficult, and it doesn't have to be huge. But um, living, and I do free range my birds, but I don't free range them when I'm not home. And when we leave the property, we also don't leave them in the pen because you do realize that foxes, coyotes. Bobcats, they can climb and jump fences. So they're not safe even in the barn pen with a six foot fence, five to six foot fence, they're still not safe. Um, so catching a predator in a forest full of other similar predators is not the most efficient way to protect your flock. <sighs> what happens the next time its cousin comes along, or its its mate comes along, and takes the rest of your flock. You you've just decimated your own food supply by not paying attention to what you should be doing. Is is actually building a pen. Now, can you ever free range again? Probably. You're gonna have to wait till this thing realizes that the dinner bell is not ringing anymore, and it's not an easy take anymore. And you can't free range them when you're not at home and your presence isn't there. So, um, we have always had pens for our chickens. When we had smaller pens, we had things 
uh, Mason's line, the neon Mason's line strung over it, and we uh, hung CDs, you know, old CDs that we didn't use anymore, from it so they could dangle and bounce in the wind and made it hard for hawks to dive on them. Um, now we have a huge pen and you can't really do that very well, but if I had a predator problem, I would attempt to do that. And I would not let them free range if I was in the middle of a uh, crisis with a particular predator coming back to get more chicken dinners. So uh, you've got to take care of your animals and, and trapping one predator is not going to do it. And then you let them out to free range again and the next one, the mate of that one, comes along and takes the rest of them. Your food supply is decimated. You can't, you, you've got to protect your food supply in that way. So I had suggested that that would be best to put up a pen. It's a lot more reliable than just letting them free range and just trying to trap everything that comes along. Um, and hot wire it, put a hot wire, you know, electrify the fence, put poultry netting or whatever you got to do. Um, and if you have flyers, I don't have flyers, but if you have, you know, not lately anyway, if you don't have fly, if you have flyers that regularly want to fly over things, um, put a cover on it. It's not that difficult to do. We did it. Yikes. <laughs> Cicada killer bee. Um, so the more efficient way to solve your predator issue is protect the birds better than try to just trap what's killing them and keep letting them run out there. And it's better than having them locked into their coop all the time, especially when it's really hot. So that was my take on trapping. Trapping is, is kind of it's not really a solution. You can't trap every raccoon in the forest. You can't trap every fox, every coyote, every bobcat. You can't do it. And right now, when they are uh, maybe teaching their kids to hunt, or when they're denning up, and when they're teaching their, their young to hunt pretty soon, you've got worse problems. So, there's that with the chicken predators. And roaming domestic dogs are the worst chicken predator, generally, in most places. Um, uh, maybe not, in, I, and I, I say they're the worst because they don't kill to eat. They kill for sport. They kill because they can and leave the dead birds, dead and dying birds around for you to dispatch the rest of the way. Um, and it's not fun. So there's the thing about the predator issue. Now. Next thing I want to talk about is probably not going to be fun for a lot of people, and they're probably going to get mad at me. Gee, that's never happened before, right? <sighs> Women who are traitors to their own sex. And in addition to that, when did the national IQ for women go down into the single digits? I mean it. I have never seen a stupider bunch. It's not just ignorance. It's not just opinion. It's just plain old stupidity. I saw a guy on the street. He's asking women if Floyd Mayweather, you know the boxer, Floyd Mayweather, famous boxer, if Floyd Mayweather suddenly decided he was a woman, he identified as, I hate that term, identified as, which is meaningless, he identified as a woman, is it okay for him to box women? And these women brain dead stupid as they are said oh yes there and he said you mean that would be a fair fight oh yes why should why would you think women could could not fight uh, could not box another woman well cupcake because he's not a woman he's a champion boxer and he can lay you flat break your nose break your face and kill you what are you trying to prove here how really stupid you are by saying such things as that, but I could not believe the number of people who said, oh yes, that would be fair, that would be okay. <sighs> Are you trying to be the author of your own demise here? Seriously. Seriously. And I want to know too, where are the men defending women? Where are the men standing up for women's rights? Women's rights. Not trans rights, women's rights. Women are being erased. Women are erasing themselves. Stupid cupcakes. Where are the men? Where are the real men? Now I know some real men on this, on this platform. But apparently there's not a lot of them left. 
because they're just zipping it and letting things happen. It's like, well, it has nothing to do with me. Sure as hell does. These are your wives, your girlfriends, your daughters, your mothers, your aunts. You don't care about any of those? You don't care if they don't mean anything to you anymore? Um, you know, the, you know, a word used to, we used to use called feminism? That doesn't exist anymore, I don't think. It doesn't have any meaning. It has no meaning. But I especially was laughing this morning about uh, a comedian <laughs> made, a good, made a joke, which is, their, which is her job, made a joke about this Dylan Mulvaney. You know, I basically saying something about, uh, well, he didn't cut it off, so he's he's not really committed. It's not really, and uh, you know, you realize the left has zero humor. They don't have any humor. They're they're so serious that they're they're actually just plain mean. And uh, the audience, I mean, she was being funny and she was handling the heckler pretty well. But um, this person goes. Um, what did she say? She said, you're a transphobe. Like I would be scared of Dylan Mulvaney. He's like the size of a toothpick. Um, I could punch his lights out in a heartbeat. But <laughs> I wanted to commit to, you know, violence like the left does. I could do that. But I'm not a violent person. I just will defend myself though. But um, this person said, you're a transphobe. And uh, they went back and forth. And then this person goes, shh. <laughs> this heckler says, he's a woman. I'm like, Honey, did you hear what you just said? You said he. You said he is a woman. You just said he. You just admitted that it was a man. And you didn't prove your point at all. What did I tell you? IQ in the toilet. I told you. And, uh, you know, these men uh, that, that are just letting this happen, that just don't, that apparently they don't think it has anything to do with them. They just let it happen. Uh, any men, have you ever had any... Uh, any women that obviously were women invade your bathroom? I don't think you probably have. Obviously, though, if they did, it wouldn't make any difference to you because they ain't very attractive. But, uh, yeah, I said that. Uh, but where's your cojones, man? Aren't you going to defend your wife? Aren't you going to defend these women against being assaulted by these this trans madness garbage? But I tell you what. I've noticed something, some, there's one thing that bugs me, and this is not, it's kind of on the subject, but off the subject, is, um, these, there's some men that I swear, they, they like to keep women under their thumb, and, you know, I'm, this is not a feminist thing, this is, I never understood, and don't appreciate, the male who goes online and tries to get a bride from a communist country, meaning the countries where the women are actually very subservient. Now, I understand why they're doing it. It's because they don't want a wife. They want a sex slave and a maid. Yeah, I said that. Um, and I... No, because, you know, I've dealt with some of those people who were very dis are very dismissive and aggressive toward women. They're very dismissive. And they're pretty much pretenders. They'll call this person their wife, but, you know, she just cooks and cleans and goes to the bedroom. That's all she does. Um, uh, yeah, couldn't couldn't you find one here? I mean, you can't you can't find one that can stand up for herself and, and be an equal partner. You can't find that. Now we're not talking about biblical submission in marriage. That's not what we're talking about. No, no, a lot of people don't understand what that means. Um, it doesn't mean being subservient. It doesn't mean being downtrodden. It doesn't mean having somebody's boot on your neck. That's not what it means. But these men want women who are actually subservient and that is why they specifically go to countries where the culture of, of women uh, is to be only slaves basically to the house you don't have your own opinions you don't have your own ideas you I mean unless they let you do you know pet you on your head and let you have a little few ideas but um, they go to these foreign countries, and I've never under, I've never liked men who did that. I've never 
had a high opinion of men who specifically did that. And I know why they do it. And we all know why they do it. Uh, now, it's one thing if you go over, if you're overseas and you meet a woman in another country and you fall in love with her and you marry her and all that kind of stuff. That's a kind of a different thing. But I'm talking about these people who go to, who want mail order brides. Uh, that makes me ill because usually they bring them over here, they cheat on them, they abuse them, and, um, and they're lucky if they hang on to them. Uh, but, you know, the, the men, either they don't have any cojones to defend women, uh, or they seem to think that they, women are owed, they are owed the uh, loyalty of a woman, so they go and get one from a foreign country where they can Real, they can be assured that they're not going to be bucked in their own home. And I don't know if you know what I'm trying to say, but I can't stand that idea. I don't like that at all. So, uh, yeah, when uh, what has ever happened to women? I don't know. And I can't speak for these women in other countries because I don't know about their... I know some cultures are very subservient. That is their nature to be in their culture. And when men from here go over there to get that, that's why they do, as far as I'm concerned. And those men are usually pigs. Sorry, uh, no, yeah, kind of piggy. So there's that. Just my humble opinion. So don't be trolling me, man. Um. Okay. What about the what about the trader in chief selling us out to China? It's all all the records are there. He's committed treason. The, the punishment for treason is death. Of course, under those guy, uh, under that law, Jane Fonda should have been put to death a long time ago. Hanoi Jane for what she did to our country. Um, you know the law doesn't apply to the left, apparently. So when you got the law that only applies to some of the people, some of the time, um, it's usually it, it means we're, out, we're without rule of law, and you have to be your own law. You have to be your own law, your own judge and jury. You have to be your own police force. You have to be your own protector, and you have to be willing to do what it takes for your family. And since they're letting everybody, every foreign national come over here, uh, for some bizarre reason I can't think, and the trader-in-chief is pandering to all these people, pretending to be woke, Woke. I hate that term too. Can we can we just speak English again? I I had to look up a word the other day. Ratchet. This ratchet child. The woman and ratchet child. Ratchet? What do you mean ratchet? I know what a ratchet is a tool. What's a ratchet child? Do you know that is a slang term for wretched? Wretched. You didn't need a new word for that. Wretched works just fine. Ratchet? I hate all the new slime. Ratchet. Why don't we just keep the words that we have? Wretched is fine. We don't need to use stupid lowbrow words. Wretched is just fine. Gosh, I can't. It's like, it's crazy, crazy. Word don't make sense to me anymore. How about it? Does it to you? I don't know. None of this makes any sense to me. But uh, anyway, that's all. Just a miscellaneous bunch of stuff. Uh,